Well, surprise, surprise, surprise. One of our very first stories today as we took a look at some of our national and international headlines is that the very same cybersecurity experts who were the first ones to conclude that Putin hacked the presidential election have now abandoned some of their claims against Russia. And they are refusing to cooperate with Congress. Apparently, they had based some of their claims on some things that were said by a Russian blogger. So I guess when you go out there and you say that we believe that there's proof that the Russians hacked somebody, maybe you should have more proof than just somebody suggesting that on a blog. What? Steve Bannon, of course, when he was put in the National Security Council seat, raised a lot of questions since he was the former head of Breitbart and a friend of Trump, if this was just a further politicizing of the NSC. He's now been removed from that seat on the council. Another council meeting on Wednesday about the Syrian gas attack, UN Security Council with Russia facing heavy scrutiny and Russia defending its ally, saying that, yeah, basically you're jumping to conclusions. Either way, the Security Council is demanding a full investigation. However, it does tend to blame, in the wording of that resolution, blaming the Syrian government. An F-16 crashed during a routine training mission it was on its way out of uh, Air Joint Air Force Base at uh, Andrews Air Force Base, and it basically just went down. Um, apparently, the pilot managed to parachute out, and the plane went down into a wooded area between a couple of cul-de-sacs. So nobody was hurt, and the houses were spared. However, it apparently had live ammunition on board, according to the pilot. That hasn't been confirmed. At first, the fire officials denied it, but then they refuse to talk about it anymore. The Krispy Kreme company, or at least the owner of Krispy Kreme, has now paid $7.5 billion to get a hold of the Panera bread chain. I wonder if that'll make their sandwiches any sweeter. The EU negotiator has called Brexit a, quote, Tory cat fight that got out of hand, basically blaming politics in Britain, saying that it's the conservative issue that just got out of hand and the next generation of Brits will return the European bloc. Oh, by the way, it's also come out that uh, Susan Rice wasn't the only White House official that was looking to unmask the Trump world figures, and Mike Flynn wasn't the only one who was exposed during all of that. They haven't said exactly who else was exposed or who else in the Obama administration was trying to unmask them, but nobody seems to be discussing the fact that this is incidental monitoring, that these people that they're trying to unmask are people that were not under investigation. These are people who just incidentally got listened to. That, that's happened to me before. I had a fellow calling me on a radio station from a local jail because he wanted to get his view out. He wanted to get his point about what his case out to the public. I, I didn't put the conversation on the air. I just had a conversation there on the, on the phone line. And I told him that basically I thought that if he tried to go on the air with it, he would be accused of jury tampering and it wouldn't help his case at all. And then a couple of days later, I had a fellow in the FBI that I knew ta talking to me about the conversation that I had with this fellow. I guess I was part of that incidental monitoring as well. It does not feel good to know that people are listening to you without your permission and without a warrant. Children up to the age of 14 may end up being banned from social media in Russia. There's a new law that's being discussed. Barry Manilow has finally officially come out as gay at the age of 73 and hence revealed his partner, his longtime manager, 39 years. They actually got married in an, a ceremony in 2014. I don't know if that's a surprise to anyone. He said the reason why he kept it a secret is that he was afraid that his fans would be offended. And last story, uh, Pravda carry some quotes from some Alaskans about how Alaska would be better off if it were under Russian rule. That'll be the subject of my commentary today. Please email me if you've got a news tip or an idea for commentary. Steve at RadioFreeSpeech.com.